In section 11.4, we're going to learn the chain rule. Now, notice that all these derivatives that we've been doing, like e to the x and natural log of x, they're all just x. Right? In general, these functions could be anything. They could be natural log of you know, 3x squared plus 4x plus 5. But in order to do those, you have to implement what we call the chain rule. So the setup for the chain rule is the following. You have a function inside another function. If you, if you think back to college algebra, they call this composition. And they wrote it with a little circle, right? F composed with G, right? Um, that simplifies as F evaluated at G of X. So the G function is inside of the F function. If you want to take the derivative of f of g of x, um, I, I sometimes call f the outside function and g the inside function. You take the derivative of the outside function. You evaluate that at the inside function unchanged, and then you times that by the derivative of the inside function. So it's f prime of g of x times g prime of x. Let's look at example number one. Do you see an inside function and an outside function? What is the inside function? 3x plus 5. What is being done to the 3x plus 5? Eighth power. So the outside function is x to the eighth. You are taking something to the eighth power. Okay. So 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 suppose that x is or, or that the function is to the eighth power. The outside function is the eighth power function. How do you take the derivative of x to the eighth? Right. The derivative of x to the 8th is 8x to the 7th. Now, we're going to do the same thing, but the x is no longer just x, right? It's some other function. So the derivative of the 8th power function would be an 8, and then stuff raised to the 7th power. The, the uh, chain rule says to evaluate that derivative at the inside function. So this inside stays the same. And that's not it. That's, that's, that's half of it. Then with that, you multiply that times the derivative of the inside function. The inside function was 3x plus 5, so that derivative is 3. Now, once you get the hang of this and you start seeing where these functions are, you will be able to think about these more easily. So, for example, whenever I look at this, what I see is something to the 8th power. So the derivative of something to the 8th power is bring the 8 down, leave the middle alone, and lower the power by 1. So it's 8, 3x plus 5, to the 7th. And then I go back and I think about what was in the middle. If the middle is not just x, then I multiply it by its derivative. <coughs> Excuse me. You could multiply it by the derivative even if it were just x, because the derivative of x is just 1. So it doesn't hurt it if you do it that way either. <coughs> And that simplifies. Now, I'll do the easy simplifications again. On the computer, you'll need to do more of these. Um, just follow the format on the computer. Let's look at example two. What is the overall function here? What, what, it, when I say overall function, 
we're, we're looking at it in terms of composition, so you can really think of it as what, what's happening to this stuff last. Yeah, fifth power stuff, right? So when you go to take the derivative, you think of it like it's x to the fifth. So that would be bring the 5 to the front, leave the inside alone. lower the power by one, and then by the chain rule, you multiply by the derivative of the inside. That's 8x plus 8. This one, if you were to simplify it, you could simplify this piece and the 5, but you can't get into the inner part here because that's raised to the fourth. The fourth, is, remember this uh, PM... A P E M D S A S, right? PEMDAS, whatever it's order of operation stuff. You can't get into it because it's the exponent. So this would be 40x plus 4, 40 times 4x squared plus 8x minus 45 to the fifth. A uh, fourth, rather. When you do the chain rule, you're always looking for the outer function and the inner function. On example three, what is the outer function? It's the square root function. What is the inner function? X squared minus X. So to take the derivative, what is the derivative of the outer function? Yeah, it's 1 over 2 times the square root of, and now it's the evaluated function from the original one here, so it's x squared minus x, times, what is the derivative of the inside function? 2x minus 1. Don't forget your parentheses. We can't cancel the 2s because it's not just 2, it's 2x minus 1, so the 2s can't cancel. The best you could do if you wanted to simplify this is write it on top, like so. All right, go ahead and do four with your partner.
So the derivative of the square root function is 1 over 2 square roots of, and then you put in the inside, times the derivative of that inside. The derivative of 9x minus 3 is 9. The best you can hope for here is 9 over 2 square roots of 9x minus 3. You'll get this to cancel if it's even, but it's not in this case, so it stays. Questions? All right, let's look at example five. Example five is e to the x squared plus x plus two power. What is the outside function? E to the x. What is the inside function? x squared plus x plus two. So the outside function is e to the x. The inside function is x squared plus x plus two. So the derivative is the derivative of the outside function. So the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. So this is going to be e to the x squared plus x plus 2. Because remember, you evaluate it at the original inside function. Times the derivative of the inside function, which is 2x plus 1. 2x plus 1. And that's it. Uh, that's, that's it. That's it. That's nothing more to do. You could distribute the E stuff, but that makes it worse. So, All right, work number six. All right, example six. We want the derivative of e to the 3x squared. So this would be y prime is equal to e to the 3x squared times the derivative of the exponent 6x. That's it. Yeah, once you do several of these of the same sort of type, like, like the square root derivatives, those have a type, e to the x, those have a type. You do enough of these, you're going to be able to do these secondhand, no problem. All right, let's look at example seven. Now, let's do this one twice. Let's do this one uh, BC, before chain rule. If we did this before the chain rule, you had to do algebra. And remember I told you that a product inside of a log splits up through addition. So it would be, split, splitting it up the first way would be um, natural log of 12 plus the natural log of x squared, which is the natural log of 12 plus 2 times the natural log of x. That's just the algebra splitting that up into some form that we can take the derivative of without invoking the chain rule. The derivative then would be 0, because natural log of 12 is a number, plus 2 over x, because the, the derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over x. So that's just 2 over x. Now we do it AC, after chain rule, and what do we get? y prime is equal to 1 over the inside, which is 12x squared, times the derivative of the inside. What is the derivative of 12x squared? 24x. 24 divided by 12 is 2x over x squared is x. And it's amazing. 
You keep working these problems and they always come out the same. Unbelievable. All right, let's do eight together, and I'll show you a shortcut. So, when you do the derivative, uh, hang on. let's say that you have f of x is equal to the natural log of u of x. u of x is some other function. One of the ways that they write the derivative of this, using the chain rule, and it's sort of as a shortcut, is is working it out, you would get 1 over u of x times the derivative of u of x. What a lot of people will do is they'll go ahead and simplify this. This is u prime of x over u of x. And of course, this only works when it's the natural log, but that's sort of the shortcut way of thinking about the derivative of the natural log. Let me show you how to use that here. You want the derivative of y equals the natural log of all of that stuff right there. So this is going to be y prime of, and the inside of the log goes to the bottom right away. And then what goes in the numerator? The derivative of the bottom. Ah, isn't that great? I knew you'd like it. Okay, so we got 66x to the 5th plus 5x to the 4th minus 4x cubed minus 3 pi x squared plus 36x minus 4. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. There it is. Now that little trick will work when it's straightforward and simple and, and whatnot. Questions over 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 that little deal? Let's look at example 9. <coughs> example 9 is the natural log of 2x plus 1 over 3x minus 1. What is the outside function? Natural log. What is the inside function? 2x plus 1 over 3x minus 1. In order to take the derivative of the inside, what must we invoke? Quotient. That is a quotient. Does everyone see the quotient? Okay. So the derivative would be, I'm going to do it the old way. It's going to be 1 over the inside of the natural log. Times the derivative of the inside of the natural log. That is a quotient. So we have an F, we have a G. This is 2 times 3x minus 1 minus 3 times 2x plus 1 over 3x minus 1 squared. We do need to simplify this one. Let me let me see if I can make these thicker here. I'll go to my I'll go to my 
really thick pen that I use for things here. Does everyone see how this fraction bar is sort of the main fraction bar? Alright, this fraction, this 2x plus 1 over 3x minus 1, is a subfraction of the bigger fraction. When you multiply fractions, you just multiply across. So it's 1 times all of this stuff, and then 2x plus 1 over 3x minus 1 times all of this stuff. Technically, since there's not a fraction here, that's the numerator of any subfraction I wanted to create in the bottom by itself. So that one and this one, well, we're going to get cancellation, right? Because if I were to multiply it out, it would be 2x plus 1 times 3x minus 1 squared over 3x minus 1. So one of them cancels here with that one right there. <coughs> And so now we get the following. I'm going to multiply this out. This is 6x minus 2 minus 6x minus 3 over. And then this 2x plus 1 and the 1 3x minus 1 that remains, they multiply together. So this is 6x squared. Uh, minus 2x plus 3x minus 1. The 6x is cancel. And that leaves me with negative 5 over uh, 6x squared plus x minus 1. Does everyone see why I got this cancellation here? This 3x minus 1 and this 3x minus 1. If you're just thinking about the denominator of the overall parts of the function, then the squared one cancels with one, one, one version of it over here. Because this is sort of in the top and that's sort of in the bottom of the overall denominator. Questions? All right, let's look at example 10. Example 10 is find the derivative of log base 3 of 1 over x. You could use the quotient rule on the inside part if you wanted to. Or you could rewrite this as log base 3 of x to the negative 1 power. Because it's just 1 over x, that's x to the negative 1. I'll do that and I'll take the derivative. So the derivative of log base 3 is 1 over this inside, which is x to the negative 1, times the natural log of the base, which is 3, times the derivative of the inside. The inside's derivative is negative 1x to the negative 2. Of the derivative, uh, you bring the negative one down, subtract one from the power. All right, so we have x's in the bottom and we have x's in the top. Which x's, top or bottom, have the higher exponent? The bottom does. All right, the bottom is a negative one that's bigger than the negative two. So what that actually turns out being is negative 1 over, uh, let's see, how do we want to write this? Uh, well, it's just, it's just x. Because really what this is, if I do it with just the x's here, x to the negative 2 over x to the negative 1, that's the same thing as 1 over x to the negative 1 plus 2 
which is 1 over x to the first. There was another way to do this one. What else could I have done if I kept going with the algebra here? The negative one goes where? Yeah. Using algebra, the exponent can come out to the front. So it's negative one, or, I'll just, or negative, log base three of x. And then if I take the derivative, so this is separate, then if I take the derivative, it's negative times the derivative of log base 3 of x, which is 1 over x natural log of 3. Well, that's exactly what we have here. Those are the same. There's lots of ways to do some of these. Okay, last one. Example 11. y is equal to the natural log of x squared plus 1 times the square root of x cubed minus x. So to do this, the outside function is the natural log function. So we'll take its derivative. So everything that's inside the natural log goes on the bottom. Uh, let me write it with just square root here. Oops. And then we take the derivative of this and we put it on top. Notice that the inside of the natural log is a product. So we have to use the product rule. So to get this derivative, this would be 2x, uh-oh, uh-oh, 2x times the square root of x cubed minus x plus the derivative of the square root of x cubed minus x. To find the derivative of the square root of x cubed minus x, we got to use the chain rule because it's the square root of a non-x function, right? So now then this just this derivative, maybe I'll do this one in, in purple. This will be good. So this is 1 over 2 square roots of x cubed minus x times the derivative of its inside, which is 3x squared minus 1, times x squared plus 1. The, the point of this problem is the following. You don't just look at a problem and say, okay, this one is a product rule, this one's a quotient rule, this one's a chain rule. You use these rules when you need to. So we were going along and things were just fine, and then we had to take the derivative of a square root of something other than x. That requires the chain rule. It's a requirement to complete that operation. To find that derivative, we needed the chain rule. We were going along, we were taking the derivative of the natural log, and the inside was a product. So now we've got to use the product rule. But we're using the product rule because the inside of the log was not just x, and so that's a chain rule. So it's a chain rule, product rule, chain rule deal. It's, it, there's, no, there's no rhyme or reason. It's just you take the derivatives as they show up.